Is it worth spending $260 on Nike's flagship Vapor 16 Elite, or would you be better off going for the $90 Vapor 16 Academy? And if the Elites are better, are they really $200 better? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna go over all the details of both of these football boots and also discuss what they're like on feet. And then by the end of the video, you should have a pretty good idea of whether or not either of these boots will work for you. And of course, if you're interested in picking up these or any of the other boots that we discuss in this video, you can find links to them on sale with discount codes in the description below. So let's kick things off by discussing what's probably the biggest difference between these boots, and that's going to be the price. Now the Elites are retailing for a full price of $260, and there's no other way to put it, that is a lot of money. Especially when you consider that even the most durable football boots, if you're using them on a really regular basis, like three, four, or five times a week, are probably only going to last you a maximum of around two seasons. So that essentially means you could end up spending around $200 $260 every year on a new pair of football boots. So obviously, I think expectations should be pretty high if you're going to spend that kind of money. Now, the academies, on the other hand, are going to retail for $90, which don't get me wrong, is still a decent amount of money. But when it comes to third tier takedown boots, that's actually become pretty much the standard. And because these boots are only a third of the price of the elite version, they're going to be more accessible for most players. And actually, that's the reason that Nike sells more academy models than their elite versions. And when it comes to spending $90 on a pair of boots, I think you're really just going to be wanting them to cover the basics. So you want them to fit well for your feet. You want them to give you decent traction on the pitch and hopefully a decent touch on the ball as well. All right, now that we've talked about price, let's get into the design differences between these two models. Well, if you're looking at these two boots from a distance, you might actually find it kind of hard to pick out which one is which just because they're in the same glacier blue colorway and have a similar design aesthetic. If anything, one of the only things that really jumps out is going to be the different coloration that you get on the sole plate. Now, starting with the elites, these boots are going to feature a one piece upper, which means you're going to have this continuous flowing design all the way throughout the tongue. And you're going to have this soft, stretchy, elasticated material, making this almost like a sock like football boot. And there's two main types of material that are on the surface of the elites. And that's going to be the grip knit that's on most of the upper, including the toe box area, and then the fly knit that runs under the lacing system and then around the collar. Now, when it comes to the grip knit upper, now this was a material that was first tested out on Nike's Phantom GX series, and I think it was really popular with a lot of players. If you haven't felt it before, it's extremely sticky, and I would probably say tacky to the touch is one of the best ways to describe it. It's definitely stickier than almost any other upper that I've tested. I wouldn't say that the new Vapor 16 has quite as much grip knit covering the surface of the upper as the new Phantom GX2, but it's definitely throughout almost all of the toe box and the side of the boot towards the front of the foot, so it's going to cover most of the areas where you're actually touching the ball. And then the fly knit that runs through the center of the boot, this has been used by Nike for generations now. It's a really soft, elasticated material that's going to give a nice amount of adjustability, especially through the midfoot, and it's also there to provide a lot of lockdown when you have the laces all tied up. And I also like that on this Elite version, you get these small perforated holes that you might be able to see there through the center. It just makes it feel a little bit more premium. When it comes to weight, the Vapor 16 Elite in a size 10.5 come in at 203 grams, which is 50 grams lighter than the Academies that we're comparing them to. Now, at that weight of around 200 grams, it does make these the lightest boot in Nike's lineup, but they're not the lightest boot on the entire market. In fact, both the Furon V7 from New Balance and the F50 from Adidas are going to come in around 10 to 20 grams lighter than the Mercurial. But that being said, once you get to around that 200 gram level, the boots are so light that you're not going to really notice that many differences. And one major factor contributing to that lightweight design is going to be just how thin this upper is. It's definitely the thinnest upper on any Nike football boot. And in my personal experience, you can definitely tell that it's thinner than the upper that you get on the Academy version. Now, moving on to the back of the boot, you have a pretty traditional FG outsole with this pretty cool new wavy pattern that Nike have added. You've got four bladed studs in the heel and then six bladed studs towards the front of the boot, including these four sharp chevrons. And then if you look in the center here, of this wavy pattern, there is going to be one stud in the midfoot that's just barely tall enough to make contact with the ground. And then if I take out the removable insole in these boots, you can see that embedded into that sole plate is going to be Nike's Air Zoom technology. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Air Zoom technology, literally all it is is just basically a compressed pocket of air that's embedded under the sole plate. 
Now this tech has been used in Nike's running shoes for a long time, and what it's supposed to do is give you a slight added energy return with every step. Now one benefit of the Elites is that you're actually going to get this air zoom layer all the way throughout the length of the football boot, so it continues all the way from the heel up to the midfoot. Whereas when it comes to the $90 Academy version, you're just going to get that air zoom layer at the base of the heel. But as we'll talk about later in the video, it's really hard to notice any meaningful differences between the implementation of the two different air zoom technologies. I don't know if I would go quite as far to just call it a gimmick, but let's just say it's not very noticeable. And final note on the elites, you can also get this soul plate in an artificial grass variation if you normally play on AG. And that AG version is just going to feature conical studs instead of all of these sharper bladed studs. Now moving on to the Academy versions, other than the colorway you see on the exterior here, these are pretty different football boots compared to the Elites. Starting off, these are going to have a traditional, more open lacing system with a standalone tongue, so these are not going to feature a one-piece upper. And that means they're not going to have that same kind of sock-like design. And not only is there no fly knit running through the center or the collar of these boots, but there's also no grip knit on the exterior of the boots either. Instead, you've got a material that Nike calls Nike Skin. I know it's very creative, and it has a much more slick matte finish to it, so it's literally not sticky at all. Personally, I've never been a big fan of boots that have really sticky uppers, so I actually kind of like the more slick surface that you get with the Academies. Now the heel area towards the back of the boot is going to be a bit thicker, but you get this really soft suede-like microfiber material that is definitely an upgrade from previous Nike Academy versions. Then that traditional tongue is going to be free towards the top of the boot, and then it's actually going to connect to the upper as you get down to the base of the lacing system. Now that's not that big of a deal, but I do kind of wish that Nike made this tongue free from the upper all the way from the top to the bottom just because I think it would give you a little bit more adjustability down towards the base of the boot. And then as I mentioned these are going to be 50 grams heavier than the elites coming in just at around 250 g's and the upper is going to be a little bit thicker but it's definitely not bulky by any means it's still a relatively streamlined boot. And then the sole plate is going to be really similar as well you're going to get firm ground bladed studs on one side and then some conical studs on the other side and that technically makes this a multi-ground or MG soul plate. But just like the elites, if you do happen to play on artificial grass most of the time, you can get a version of the academies with an AG soul plate. All right, so that should cover pretty much all the main differences when it comes to the design, but how do these boots actually feel on feet? Well, starting with the elites, you would certainly expect a $260 pair of football boots to feel great, and despite that pretty snug fly knit collar, these do slip on and off really easily. And I think the first thing I noticed as soon as I got these on is that they do have an enormous amount of lockdown, even as you're just getting the laces tied together. I think the heel area is really deep and comfortable when it comes to Nike boots. It's something that they tend to nail on almost all of their models, pretty much regardless of the price point. And just because this is from the Mercurial series, it's a really snug fitting football boot. So all the way from the heel to the midfoot to the toe box, it's just going to wrap your feet really tightly. And that thin grip knit upper also was really noticeable as soon as I got the boots on feet, they just felt incredibly light and thin. It's like you're basically just putting a screen protector over your feet. It's really that thin as you put them on. Now some people are going to like the really snug fit you get out of these, but it's important to note that these boots are going to be pretty narrow through the toe box, and if you have wide feet like me, that can be a challenge when it comes to fit. Now in terms of length, these do run true to size, so in a size 10.5 US, that did work for me, and my toes came up pretty much almost just to the end of the boots. But since these boots are pretty snug, Nike does mention on their website that if you're looking to get a slightly roomier fit, you can go up half a size. And generally, I think that's good advice if you're someone who likes to have maybe just a little bit more wiggle room, or if you're anticipating your feet growing, if you happen to be a little bit younger, it could definitely be a good move going about a half size up. And as I mentioned, that lacing system and the elasticated fly knit around the heel area work together so well to keep your feet secure, and there's absolutely no slipping at the back of the boot whatsoever. Your feet are just going to feel extremely locked in. My only real wish when it comes to this elite version is that I wish Nike offered a wide variation of these football boots because I think there are definitely people that would be willing to spend the money just to get a boot that accommodated them a little bit better. Because I can certainly attest that if these boots had maybe just a half centimeter or so more space at the front of the boots, they would certainly be a lot more comfortable for me. But for people who have average or maybe slightly narrower shaped feet or anyone that's tried on a lot of Nikes before, I 
definitely think the Vapor 16s are going to work well for you. Now, when it comes to the Vapor 16 Academy, I was a huge fan of how the predecessor of these boots fit. That was the Vapor 15 Academy. That was one of my favorite budget boots of last year, so my hopes were really high when I was trying these on. And overall, I actually got a pretty similar vibe with these boots. Despite the few small design changes here and there, they're super easy to slip on and off with that traditional open lacing system, and you definitely do get a slightly more open fit throughout the ankle area just because you don't have that fly knit that's hugging your feet really closely. And honestly, as long as you go true to size and then get the laces tied pretty tight, you're going to have lockdown that's just as good in the academies as it is in the elites. Now, I will note that you can tell that the upper on the academies is a little bit thicker when it's on feet, and they maybe feel slightly more restrictive and a little bit more rigid when compared to the more expensive version. But whether or not it's a $200 difference, that I'm not so sure. And at the end of the day, both boots are going to provide pretty much everything that you're really looking for when you go and buy a football boot. So I think the lockdown on both is going to be definitely optimal. And the traction you get from the sole plate, I mean, this is going to be more than enough for any playing surface. In fact, it's probably going to be too aggressive for AG. I'd recommend the artificial grass version. And then when it comes to comfort, they're both going to be pretty solid, especially if you have average to narrower feet. And if you have wider feet, you may even have slightly more success with the academies just because of that slightly more open lacing system. But if you have really wide feet, you would probably be better looking at other models from Nike, like the Tiempo Legend 10 or the Premier 3. Or better yet, you could go for a wider brand in general, like New Balance. Now let's talk about some differences I noticed when playing with these boots on the pitch. So first up, when it came to the elites, the grip knit upper is extremely sticky. And when you're dribbling, that means you're going to have a super close touch. Now, in my opinion, when you get them fresh out of the box, they're actually almost too sticky just because when you're dribbling, it can be easy for the ball to get trapped under your feet. But the benefits of that grip knit material kind of start to shine more if you're shooting or passing. Definitely, if you're really into taking free kicks or you like curved long balls or long shots this is going to be a great material just because we all know that technique is going to take you 90 to 95 percent on the way there when it comes to your shooting or your passing but just that little added grip can help get you that final 5% of the way there. Now, as I mentioned, when compared to the elites, the academies do feel just a little bit thicker and maybe a little bit more rigid on feet, but you only will really notice that if you're doing a really close AB comparison. Overall, the academies still feel like light and aggressive, minimal speed boots when you have them on the pitch. And I actually liked it with the academies, you get this really clean matte upper that gives you a lot of separation from the ball when you're dribbling and it's still going to be fine if you want to hit longer shots and get a little bit of curve. It's just not going to have quite the same amount of grip as you get on the elites. But no doubt with the academies, you're still going to get a really close touch on the ball, and there's a ton of sensitivity that you get from wearing these boots, and I think that's something a lot of players are looking for when they pick out something like a Mercurial. And then in my opinion, the differences between the two different air zoom techs that are embedded in the sole plate were pretty much negligible. And who knows, maybe the more substantial air zoom unit you get in the elites does actually make some sort of difference, but the differences that you notice with the two different uppers is so much more significant that you're not really going to be thinking about the different sole plates. All right, so lastly, what are my final thoughts and is the Vapor 16 Elite worth it? Well, depending on who you are, I could definitely see myself recommending both of these boots for different situations. Now, if you've got a little bit more money to spend and you want a premium football boot that's got pretty high-tech materials like grip knit as well as fly knit, then I could definitely see myself recommending the Vapor 16 Elite. But if you just want a budget option that's under $100, that's still going to be pretty comfortable, give you enough lockdown, and give you that speed boot feel, then the Academies might be the way to go. Now keep in mind these are from the Mercurial Vapor series, so they're going to have a pretty narrow and snug fit, so keep that in mind when shopping and think about your specific foot shape. And just because one of these boots is more expensive, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fit better for you, so I would definitely recommend trying them on if you get the chance. And guys, that is going to do it for this video. Please let me know in the comments below if there's any other football boots you're interested in me reviewing. I plan on making a lot more content as we get close to the end of the year. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Please leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.